The question is, what do we do for them? Now that we've already intervened on one part of that process into that private contract, what do we do now? Hey, it's Noel coming to you with another video here. You know, my last video that I posted about the eviction moratoriums being challenged in court in, in Texas, going ahead and not even abiding by the CDC rules. It's interesting, there's been some new news, some interesting other things, you know, this theme about the government intervention into the mortgage markets and into private contracts caused a lot of uh, comments on my posts and there's some interesting debate going on. Well, the federal court in the sixth district, which does cover Ohio, Tennessee, some of these other states, ruled that the CDC ban was unconstitutional. Haven't read a lot about it, so I won't go into it too much, except to just say that they're starting to rip the Band-Aid off. And it will be interesting to see what happens in the debate that we're having. And I'd like to really have people weigh in on this a lot more. And I'm going to do some more videos on this. What do we do about these small landlords? About the small landlords who's had their hands tied where they couldn't evict a tenant, where they couldn't pay their mortgage, but they were having to cover the liability of the taxes, insurance, maintenance, and things like that. And having a tenant in there, they can't sell the house. You know, my opinion is we should let the free market go. But now that the government's intervened and kept these landlords and put them over a barrel where they can't sell or do anything with their property, what do we do now? What kind of support do we give them? Or do we just leave them hanging in the wind? I mean, these are small landlords that usually have one or two homes that having a forbearance, just even a forbearance is going to really hurt their credit. Having a foreclosure is going to cause actually some housing issues with them potentially because these are usually small owners. And so having these loans stuck in this position and not being able to do anything with these properties could cause some issues in the future, which is what we're trying to avoid. So we're helping the tenants, but what about these small landlords? These aren't rich, wealthy landholders, you know, that own large portfolios that I'm talking about. I'm talking about some of these smaller owners. So the question is, what do we do for them? Now that we've already intervened on one part of that process into that private contract, what do we do now? The second thing is the CFPB came out with some proposed rules that they would probably institute in September. There's some public comment until May. And some of those are really getting involved into the mortgage process and getting involved into, again, private contracts where they are trying to ease the way and trying to kick the can down of foreclosures. Well, here's what's different about this time um, compared to the last time we had an uptick in foreclosures was the Great Recession. Besides all the fact that the things I've talked about that there's more equity, there's a lack of supply, which is causing the house prices to go up. There is COVID, which is causing some of the uh, mortgage issues with some of these owners. The banks, the last thing they want to do is foreclose on a house. It causes a huge devaluation of the asset. It's a long and arduous process. So they want to work these loans out so they're motivated to do this and is the CFPB stepping into this process and going right in the middle of it is that going to cause more problems than there already are with the banks already very motivated to work these loans out and do we really need the CFPB to step in like this I mean they're stepping into a lot of different things and there's some other things they've stepped into around racial equality and, and things like that which is causing some heartaches with the banks because they can't treat borrowers different around race but the CFPB PB is telling them that they need to. So it's really interesting to know. I'd be curious on what people think about this with the CFPB stepping in, with the CDC's eviction moratorium, with the forbearances. I feel like, and I could be wrong and time will only tell, that the government's trying to control too much and step in too much when you have a private market that is very motivated to not have a lot of foreclosures, to not have, you know, the eviction bans is a whole different thing, but the government's already stepped in and now what do we do? It's kind of like the interest rate thing with supply. There's a lot of talk about how do we slow down the housing appreciation? Well, Maybe we let interest rates go up a little bit and that's going to cause a little bit of the demand to go down. So a lot of topics there. I'd be interested to hear what you have to say. Hopefully I wasn't jumping around too much. Hopefully it all makes sense. I'm going to be posting some more videos around this in the future because I think it's something, a conversation that we need to have. 
as the government's getting more and more involved into the mortgage markets. I mean, notwithstanding, what about someone who's bought a portfolio of loans and they have certain covenants with these servicers and now the government's stepping in and saying you have to do something different? How are we going to deal with this in these private contracts? I know there's a lot of debate that I've had with different people that have talked about, well, the government stepped in many times around private contracts uh, with the eviction moratoriums. I mean, you know, they're passing housing laws around the country that could affect these things, but these aren't laws. This is a government regulatory entity coming in and saying you have to change some contract law. And I think it's going to be very, very interesting. So leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.